everyone, welcome to Driving Approach. My name is Alexei and you're watching Approaching Driving. And this is the second part of the video where I'm talking about all the buttons that are in the car and what they do. And in this second part of this video, I'll be talking about the last four sections that we didn't talk about, which would be the Prindle or the, you know, the transmission selector. That would be the fifth section. Uh, the AC controls that is like in the middle of the of the cluster panel. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty slippery here. Then it's the entertainment system and the screen. That's the seventh section. And the roof is the eighth section, where is the controls for the sunroof and the light that's in the car. So let's continue and hope you enjoy the second part of this video and uh, you learned something about the buttons that are in the car. We went through the buttons outside, we went through the buttons on the left arm rest for the driver, um, we went through all the armrests for each passenger, there are no many buttons there. We went through the section that's to the left. Uh, to the bottom left of the steering wheel but we went through the steering wheel and now we're moving on to the fifth section which is the prindle or the prnd selector and that's your transmission selector and this car transaxle because it's a front wheel drive but we're not going to get into details right now and this is the section so it, it has the lever selector that lets you choose the position of the transmission that you want it to be, either being it in the park, in reverse, neutral or drive. And this car also has the section where you can switch through gears and speeds. So this is like first, it allows you second and so forth. And then once you don't want to do that anymore, you just switch it back to drive. So to the left and to the right of the Prindle selector is the seat heater button and it has three lights that light up and you can choose how hard you want it to start warming up for the driver and for the right passenger. Next button is the activation or deactivation of the heated steering wheel. So you click orange lights up and the steering wheel starts to heat up. Very nice for the winter months and uh, turning it off you just click on it and the light goes off the and the next button the last button on this section actually because these two are empty if you know what what these buttons are on the fully loaded Elantra write it in the comments we have three buttons one on the bottom left of the steering wheel and the other two on to the right of the Prindle selector and the last button um, on the Prindle selector is the drive mode and there are three drives uh, in drive modes in this car, which is regular, just the way it is right now. There's nothing, none of the drive modes selected. Then it's Eco, just like you can see it appeared on the left. And then it's Sport. And let me go back here. So you click through this and it goes always from just regular, from regular to Eco and to Sport. And you just click through them and changes the characteristics of how the engine responds, how it keeps a little bit of RPM. But again, those are details. We'll go through that later. Right now, we're going through the buttons. So that's the end of the one, two, three, four, fifth section. And we're moving on to the sixth section, which is the climate control. So the sixth section that I divided the car into uh, to look at all the buttons that the car has is the climate control section and in this car in the Elantra this is how the climate control section looks like it's actually this whole thing with the uh, emergency button actually being right in the middle of it um, if someone doesn't know the emergency button turns on the light the left and the right blinkers obviously in the front and in the back so they light up so people around you know that there is a reason why you stopped or why you're driving slow. So it's, they, they understand that you're in emergency. So it's an emergency light. That's why it's a triangle. So on the top left corner of the AC section, 
you have the uh, AC button. In the summer months, if you want your AC to be at max, you would need to have that on. Um, otherwise, it's just regular ventilation and AC is turned on only when this button is clicked and the light bulb is lighting orange. So moving on, uh, at the bottom left, we have the knob that selects the speed at which the blower blows and you can hear it as I go through the four and you regulate how how fast the blower is blowing air to warm up or cool the car depending on what you selected what temperature you selected that's actually brings us to the second knob that's available here is to select the temperature and as you know the blue would give you cold and red would give you warm then in this line is the section you select which part of the car you want to be uh, cooled or heated depending on what you chose with the temperature and the speed uh, it could be either the top the head and the torso or it could be legs which is the third button or it could be both if you choose that or it could be the front windshield and the legs and as I click those buttons you can probably hear how um, mechanism moves the flaps inside the car there to allow air to go this way or another way depending on what I choose and the last two buttons in the AC section is to choose just to blow on the uh, windshield or to defrost the rear window and as you can see the rear window doesn't have uh, vents it has those lines especially on sedans and they actually heat up and warm up the rear so that ice could be defrosted or snow can melt that's on the rear window actually there's one more button which is this button and many people are probably wondering what it means and it's a car with the arrow circling in a like showing like a circle uh, if you have that button on it means that car is not taking air from the outside to circulate in the car it circulates the air that is already in the car if you're driving on a highway and there's a highly polluting car and you have all your windows closed but this is not selected some of that might be getting in and you might be smelling it a bit more and if you're going to click on it it will start circulating the air that's inside the car and not take that air in it actually could be less of that pollution coming in still going to be coming through and you're probably still going to be exposed to it but if you try this you will notice the difference how the car is not taking the outside air and just circulating the air that's inside it helps with cooling the car faster in summer other than that, it's better to have it off, I would say, so that the car is taking the fresh air in and circulates it through the car. So that's pretty much it for the AC system. We went through all the buttons, both of the knobs, different ways that the flaps could open and close and uh, let air a certain way in and out. So that's the end of this uh, sixth section. And we're moving on to the seventh section, which is the entertainment system and the buttons for it are right here with the display in this car the display is a touch display so you can actually click with your finger and uh, scroll through it and choose different settings and whatever you want to do so that could be that could be considered one of the buttons that the whole screen is touch screen and there are many things that you can choose by click on, clicking on the screen we're focusing on the buttons so we're gonna go through the buttons that are in the entertainment system and we have two knobs on the left and on the right and the first knob obviously turns the volume up and down and you can also turn off the radio and turn it on or if you have, if you have AUX it will turn off the just the audio source or if you hold it for some time it would actually turn off the entertainment system and turn on this or there's another clock that you can choose so we'll turn on the system we'll turn the system back on and we'll move on so that's what this knob does up and down volume and turn on and off radio or turn on and off the whole screen then we can go to radio button which just takes you to the radio and that's all it does from anywhere in the 
settings you click radio and it sends you right into the radio then the media button sends you right oh there because nothing is connected through either uh, USB or AUX there's no media that's why it doesn't send you to the media if something is connected it will send you right to the media same with the phone button if there will be a phone connected it will send you to the phone or it will start trying to connect to a phone through a Bluetooth because it also has Bluetooth it will try to connect to previous phones that it has saved or that it was able to connect to through Bluetooth next on we have seek down and track up those are the buttons to um, switch songs if you're listening on um, like through a phone or switch to different stations uh, in the radio it's pretty much mimics the button from the left uh, side of the steering wheel which is this one this knob mimics this knob those two buttons and next uh, button is the apps slash i which takes us to apps and info page just like radio or media takes you to radio or media apps takes you to the apps page and display actually turns off just the display so holding this button turns off the system and now it's just in the sleep mode with the watch on and then we can turn it on and just turn off the display technically this doesn't turn off the system but it turns off the display and the last button in this section before the uh, knob is the setup button and it takes you to setup so pretty much settings of the front display and then last knob searches for radio so you can search by clicking track or seek for radio or by scrolling this knob up and down it searches for AM or FM other than that it doesn't doesn't really do anything else so that was the seventh section of uh, buttons that we have on the car and there are some levers like these ones over here the one for opening the trunk that does the same thing as the button that's outside and the lever to open the gas tank uh, but th these are not buttons they are connected through cables to actuators yes, or mechanical structure that's used to hold and open the trunk and the gas tank and there's a lever that we use in previous videos to open the hood the last buttons that are in this car are actually on the roof and one of the reasons because this car is fitted with uh, with the sunroof um, so we're gonna go through these buttons obviously left and right turns on the light then this button will allow you to so if you don't want to have the lights to turn on when the doors open or close you have it in this position to the most right if you want them to be all on you click it to the left but if you want the lights to turn on only when you open the door you put it in the middle and when you open the door the lights light up so that's the selector for when you want the lights on all the time never or only when the door is open and i kept it in never because just something that for now fits me better and the um last button that we have here is the selector for the sunroof we can uh, click it and if we just slightly click on it not not bring it all the way it's gonna allow us to open the sunroof as much as we want or or we can uh, bring it all the way back so we can go like this little by little or we can go all the way down and it will fully automatically open the sunroof but only up to here and if we actually go a little bit more it will open it fully until where the cover for it goes and same way we can close it little by little or we can bring it all the way forward and it will fully slide and close the sunroof the other way the sunroof can be open or closed is to actually clicking on the button like this and it opens the sunroof this way 
So we click like this and it opens it up. And to close it, we'll just go the same way. We'll click it this way and like that. And you can cover it with this slider. It's not electronic at all. You just move it by hand. I will show right now how it looks for how it looks like from the outside. And uh, there you have it. Those are all of the buttons that are in the car. This was the Elantra 2018, two liter uh, Hyundai, uh, not fully loaded, somewhere in the middle. I think it's like an S SE plus. Um, the difference from the previous model is that it has start stop button. That's actually another button to, <laughs> to go through, but it makes sense. Uh, it has the keyless entry with the buttons, black buttons on the left and right side from the first section that we talked about. And other than push start button and the proximity key, it has the sunroof. And the key is not key that you put in and turn, it's the push start button is a different key fob than trim that's one lower than this one. Another thing to mention is that each vent that is located inside this one, one, two, three, and four could be regulated in terms of how open or how closed they are. With this selector right here, if it's all the way to the right, they're fully open and they allow all the air through. If they're all the way to the left, they're closed and they will actually not allow any air through. And then you can put it in the middle, play around with it and figure out how much air do you want to be passing through so that you feel the most comfortable. So here are all the buttons that I was able to find in the Hyundai Elantra 2018. If you guys think that I missed uh, some buttons, write them also in the comment. So there are two things that I'm asking you to write in the comments is what are, if you know, what are the buttons that go here and here on the fully loaded Elantra and if you have noticed that I missed any buttons. So I'll be happy to read that. Thank you very much for watching this video. Stay tuned. This was Driving Approach. My name is Alexei and have a good day.